Welcome back, everybody. It's Jeff and Justin, your favorite frustrated rock stars, back live on MP4 with some talk and roll. We're at the On the Rocks Tavern in Sandy Springs. Right. And uh, just, you know, having some fun. Yeah, sure, having a little drink. So uh, join us and let's talk some music. What are we doing tonight? Well, I thought we'd talk about everybody's favorite topic, race. Race will be named. Race will be named. We're going to talk about race and people that broke. This is a positive race story. Yes. This is people that broke the color barrier in certain musical genres. First one that jumped to my mind was Charlie Pride, who of course was a country singer. He wasn't the first black country singer, but something about Charlie Pride, he really did break through well, like mainstream. Well, yeah, it was when country had its big boom in the 70s and he was, you know, the same thing with the hat and the, you know, guitar and It's just for me, it's not so much who breaks not the first one in, but the first one that really does something. Yeah. Like wins Grammy awards or sells a lot of records. To me, that's the person that really breaks it through. You know what I'm saying? Right. Go go to the 50s with Chuck Berry. Mm -hmm. I and mean, that was a big thing right. when he busted out on the scene. You know, Chuck Berry, I'm a huge Chuck and Berry And of course, fan. everyone ripped him off. All the white guys ripped him off. Oh, yeah. He saw what rock and roll was doing, and he said, hey, I can write music for white kids. All I got to do is talk about getting laid, driving to cars. cars. You know, all his songs are, Maybelline, I yeah. got girl, you know. No particular, pl I mean, all his songs are sexually driven, but they're like, you know, white people stuff. Right. Like, you know, I'm going to the dance, I'm going to the, you know, the prom. Yeah. So he, that's what he did, you know, he could have written about his stuff, but he decided, hey, I want these records to break through. Yes, I want Alan Freed to rip me off. Right. So getting to more recent times, uh, hip hop is another thing where race kind of plays a part. Do you think the Beastie Boys they yeah. didn't really break any barriers because what? rap was new what are back you talking then. About? It was new back then. Yeah. The Beastie Boys were huge. Oh, of course, race they were. breakers. I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't, no, I don't agree with that because when they came out, no way. rap was not big in the white community. So it was it, like it, after them, it was. Well, yeah, but but they're not. Everybody kind of knew about rap, but it was like this black thing. It was like this inner city thing, and all of a sudden, here were the Beastie Boys. Yeah, but I don't think their legacy is being oh, you know, the first white rappers. I disagree. And they were instrumental in bringing rap music to the suburbs. I agree with that totally, Come but on. I don't think they were breaking a race barrier. They were. They brought them. They together. brought rock and roll to the black community, so, so how and and so rap to the white community. They did bring rap. They brought it to the mainstream. And he's right. They brought Led Zeppelin to the black community. Because all of a sudden, no, no rappers went and bought the Led Zeppelin records. I, I bet they did. We bought the funk records. They didn't know they didn't. I don't think so. I bet there was some crossover. No, I don't think so. I, no, I don't think that people got into Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath based I don't think on to the degree, licensed to ill. To the degree that the suburbs got into rap, I don't think the, the <laughs> black community got into rock. But I bet there's 10,000 people that got into rock and roll because of the Beastie Boys. No, I think Eminem was the first really respected white rapper. Well, Eminem's considered as good or better than Jay-Z. Yeah. yeah. And Jay-Z is pretty much the yeah, the number one rapper in, in rapper, you know. I mean, Jay-Z is the top of the pile right yeah. now in terms of skills. And people put Eminem right next to him. Right. That's huge. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we're missing a whole bunch of them. We always do, but we only have so much time. Yeah. If you can think of some people that broke the color barrier in their musical genres, you know how to reach us, Jeff. Uh, info at thefrustratedrockstars.com or, leave, or leave comments wherever you want. It, uh, yeah, yeah, wherever you want. <laughs> on, the, on the steps of the Capitol. <laughs> just, just, yeah. just write the frustrated rock stars. So, yeah. uh, so let's move on. Speaking of race yes. and, and Chuck Berry. Oh, you just tied it all together. Yeah, so let's, let's, pretty let's move on to uh, In the Noise. Last week, right. uh, Chuck Berry skipped out on two sold-out shows in Spain. Yeah, okay. I read about this. I read about this. So, uh, so the way we do it is, you know, is it sign it or drop it? Good or bad? What do you think? Um, I kind of drop it because A, I'm a huge Chuck Berry fan, and B, the guy is like 80 years old. It could be a health problem. I thought, I read the article too, and I thought that they kind of made it sound like he was up to something or like there was contract disputes. Well, yeah. Maybe he's an 83 year old guy that was tired that night. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're getting a music, you're getting a legend. And you know, I also don't think he should be touring, quite frankly. Like no, that. not in Spain. He's 85 years old or whatever. He's, 80, he's 82. He's 82 years old. He's too old to be, like, packing along. Because you know his contract. Yeah. It's, that, well, it's I, famous. He has I, the most famous contract in rock and roll. His, contra his contract is this. He shows up. You have a local band that knows his songs. He drives himself. He shows up with a guitar and amp, plugs in, plays with the local band, gets his check and leaves, drives himself home. He's been doing that for like 40 years. Right. So he's got. So he's banging no. around Germany. He's 83 years old. Let the man. I mean, no. I say sign it. He can do what he wants. If he, if, if you, if you buy a Chuck Berry t concert ticket. Right. 
he may not be there. You know, you can kind of expect that. He's, no, I buy a ticket. I expect him to be there. Well, you know, not at that age. I don't think. It's not like you're going to see. I don't Bush think he's been in this kind of tour though. This well, is a yeah, grueling but, tour. Yeah, no, but he's there. You know, you know what's sad is, or not yeah, sad. Yeah, he's not there though. You know what's sad is, uh, is only four thousand fans. I mean, if two sold out. I shows, think four thousand fans. Total, total. I two thousand a night. Well, that's guess. a lot to go see Chuck Berry. Well, two, two small venues. Well, I, I mean, don't it get me wrong. Big. It should be the biggest. I say in the world. sign it. You know, he can do what he wants. He's I say drop it. I don't like Chuck Berry. But I don't like it. I say drop it because the whole story makes me think he's going to die soon. I don't like that. Okay. No, we don't want him to die. No, it's going to happen soon. No, that's the sad part. Hang around, Chuck. Okay, so let's move on to uh, tonight's comment commentary. Ooh, comment commentary. This is, uh, this is where we respond to you to you responding to us. It's a whole circular thing. We love it. Uh, this is from sound uh, effects. <laughs> this is regarding the uh, the sampling show we did. Oh yeah, we're talking about you know sampling of music. Right. And uh, Poop Deck, oh. 2009. Poop Deck, holla at you boy. Says uh, the Run DMC version of Walk This Way is a full cover and is and also includes a recording of Joe Perry playing guitar. Right. Uh, with a different solo, I might add. I mean, Poop Deck's picking well, up the guitar. Well, he's got solos. that. I like it. Uh, and contributions by Steven Tyler. I don't think it should be considered sampling. We did actually cover that. Yeah. I don't consider that. That was That's a, not a that sample. Was a cover. That's a cover song. Right. You know, the only thing they really did sample was the drum. They, they almost kind of sampled. Yeah, they sampled themselves. Right. Well, I mean, the actual sample, they're using right. the same drum beat from the original. They could have brought Joey Kramer in. Right, and done the whole thing. But why? Right. So they just they did the drum beat, and of course, yeah, they, they did things. So that actually didn't really fall under sampling. It falls under no. basically That's a cover covering song. a tune. They just happened to cover their own song, right. but they did it. They did. They basically covered it in, you know, covered it completely. Right. Unlike some, like the uh, the Puff Daddy one, or right. you know, it's like they right. they cover loop the. Stuff. They take the music right. and just rap over it. Right. They just loop the the cool part of the song. Yeah. So, but anyway, but thanks. Thanks so for writing in. Poop Please keep down. writing in. Thank you so much. Thanks and for yeah, watching. Yeah. Send all your comments to info at thefrustratedrockstars.com. Leave comments and. Uh, Enjoy your music. Yes, enjoy your. Enjoy, that, you know, I love that. That should be our catchphrase. That is. Enjoy your music. Enjoy your music. Enjoy it. Don't put it on and then clean your room or do that too, but enjoy it. Yes. Whenever it's on, appreciate it, enjoy it. And come and talk about it with us anytime. Yeah. We'll catch you next time. Bye.